Hi, I'm Grant, and this guy's Elisha. He does school at home. My wife and I want his education to be exciting and filled with awesome activities that prepare him for life. So we've been using subscription boxes to spice up his curriculum. Every week we learn about a topic that goes along with that week's subscription box. This week we'll be opening Bits Box, so we're learning about technology in a series we call Teach Me Tech. The topic this week is variables. In this video, we're going to make a Madlib fortune teller, we're going to code some apps that use variables, and we're even going to make a simple computer that will play a song. So, you ready to get started? Got another bits box. You ready to open it? <laughs> yes. Whoa. Grown up guy. Robo boogie. What? This is so amazing. The apps in this bits box are going to especially focus on teaching you about variables. This box also has dividers so I can organize my apps. And now we're ready to go make some apps. Elisha, what's a variable? I don't know. I have an example. If I tell you that there are some macaroni noodles in this cup, and that there are the same number of noodles on this side of the marker and this side of the marker, can you figure out how many are in the cup? There are six. Six, how'd you figure that out? Because I saw that there's not just three. I saw, I saw the six other ones, so I know there are six in here. Okay, we'll open it and see if you're right. Yay! One, two, three, four, five, six. You got I it right. That's right. This cup acts like a variable, and variables are used in math and in computers to store things. The phone, computer, tablet, whatever device you're watching this video on probably uses hundreds of variables just to play this video. In our example, we used a cup to represent a variable, but there are actually two kinds of variables. There are what I call unknowns and true variables. In that example with the macaroni noodles, the cup was acting as an unknown. There was a certain number of macaroni noodles inside, we just didn't know how many it was. This game is going to teach you how sometimes variables are unknowns. Elisha is learning about multiplication right now in math, so I made this game where we have a bunch of multiplication equations, and for each equation, a number is missing, and that's the, the little red box. We're going to play a game where we try to find the missing number. In other words, we're trying to figure out the unknown variable that completes the equation. Here's how the game is gonna work, Elisha. We'll take turns. When it's your turn, you pick a card and then you say what the missing number is. If you get it right, then you get that many points. In other words, if the missing number is five, you get five points, okay? Can I go first? Yep, go ahead. Okay, this is six. Okay, you got it right. So put it over here. You got six points. Now it's my turn. Don't do the fives. I'm gonna do this one because oh. this one's also six. Two times six is twelve. Oh. I get six points too. It's your I'm turn. gonna do this one, which is eight. I'm right. Hmm. Five times four is twenty. I'm gonna. This is nine. Nine. Four times two is eight. Two. On this card, we have four plus something equals 28. What does that red box represent? Uh, the mm, that variable. Yeah, it's a variable. And what does a variable mean? True or unknown. Yeah, that's the number that we're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. It's the number we don't know. Yeah, it is. It actually represents a number. We just don't know what that number is, right? And I... In and this case, what's the number? Nine, and the one on the back is seven. Yeah. We're going to count these up and we'll see who won. 
I might have 200. Two, four, six, eight. Plus eight. So, Elisha's final score, 194. Yeah. 194 points. 194. You got 194, I got 150. Two, four, six, eight. 194 to 158. You beat me. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Variables aren't just in math and, and computers. Variables can also be used in language and in other things. For example, if you, whenever you fill in a blank, you're using a variable. So we're going to make a Mad Lib fortune teller. When I was a kid, these were called cootie catchers. <laughs> we called them cootie catchers. But this one is called a fortune teller. So we're going to make this. When you ask a question, you'll pick a color, and then we'll look inside, and you pick a number, and each number has with it some words that you have to choose. Once you've chosen a word, we'll open this, and when you look inside, there's a blank to fill in. That blank is just like a variable. See, variables aren't just for math and computers. Sometimes you have variables that use words. This one says, choose an adjective. I want it. An adjective is a word that describes something. Can you think of a word that describes something? Big. Big. This says, the skies are blank, the future is uncertain. So if we put your word in there, the skies are big. Whoa. No, you said big. The skies are big, the future is uncertain. This game will answer questions about the future and it's gonna tell us what will happen. What's something that you want to know about the future? Is it gonna be fall in April? What? Is it going to be fall in April? <laughs> All right, let's try it. Pick a color, red, green, blue, or purple? Um, blue. Blue? B-L-U-E. Okay, pick a number, three, seven, six, or four. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Choose an adjective. Uh, That's a describing word. Big? Big? All right. Signs point to a very big no. <laughs> it's your turn. How about, am I going to get a new car for Christmas? Pick a car. Blue. B L U E. Eight, two, five, one. Mm, two. One, two. Choose an adjective in the singular now. Hmm, happy puppy. Picture a happy puppy. That is your answer. Picture a happy puppy? This game taught us about variables. What were the variables in this game? The blanks. Yeah, when we picked a word, we filled out a blank with a word. And sometimes we chose one word, sometimes we chose a different word. And that's how variables act. They vary, they change. Sometimes it means one thing, sometimes it means a different thing. The apps Elisha has been working on this week have used variables to do different things. So we're gonna show you some of the, the apps that we made. So the first one is Castle Defender. In Castle Defender, there's a robot that's attacking the castle, and he keeps flying yeah. overhead. And your job is to... Hit the robot with a rock. <laughs> I got him! To make this app, what were some of the variables that we used? Rock and evil and counter? Yep, those are variables. How do you know that they're variables? Because they have equal space, equal space. Whenever something has one equal sign after it, we're setting a variable. So rock is a variable, evil is a variable, and counter is a variable. Now, how are we using rock later on in this app? Rock hides if the evil explodes 
if rock hits evil, then the rock will hide? Yeah. Um, the next step we're going to show you is bed bug bedlam. There's all these sorts of bugs and you got to tap on them with the mouse. They disappear like blow up or pop. You got to pop them. Yeah. Ah, there's so many. Let's look at the Lonesome Yeti. When you click play, it makes a yay and when it moves to a different spot, but it goes bigger or smaller. Let's take our Lonesome Yeti and give him some friends by putting it in a loop. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <sighs> so now, every time the loop runs, it creates a Yeti, it picks a random number for X, a random number for Y, and then moves the Yeti to the X and Y value. And look how many Yetis there are. Would you say there are too many Yetis? Now we're going to make a simple computer that will play a song, and we're going to program the computer to play a song using variables. Okay? So this should be a lot of fun. I know which one, what song we should do. What song should we do? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That sounds good to me. We need to connect one cable to the ground. Let's do the black one. So go ahead and plug okay. the black one into ground. And white into the... D8. D8? Okay. And then we're going to plug the other end of uh, the white and black ones into our passive buzzer. Passive buzzy. There. Okay. We've got some code open. Let's add it to our little computer that we've made. I see it going. Okay, so we got it working playing some notes. How does the computer know what note to play? What you put? Well, it's going to play a tone using output 8. That's this one. And it's going to play melody this note. Each of these, note C5, note D5, and so on, all of those notes are actually variables. If we switch over to this file, we can see each of these notes mm. is saved as a variable. Let's look at this one right here, note A4. Remember we, we, we stuck noodles in the cup? And even though we couldn't see them, we knew they were in there. And there was a certain amount of noodles in the cup. And we knew. Yeah. So this is a variable just like that cup. How many noodles are we putting in this variable, in this cup? A4 is 440. That number means that the computer is telling the buzzer to turn on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off 440 times in one second. Here are our notes. We are going to make a tone. So now we've got a very, very simple program. Okay, let's try this. Let's see what happens if we run this code. Okay, so let's unplug it again. It was, we don't just want to play one note. We want to play a bunch of notes. So. Yeah. We need to figure out how to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I think it's C, C, um, and then let's wait in between. When you're coding, it's a good idea to do a little bit and then test it. So let's try this. And let's see how we're doing. Let's see how close it sounds to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. All right, here we go. That doesn't sound anything like... Let's try it again.
Much better. Good job. My background is math and software engineering, and I've been impatiently waiting for Elisha to be old enough that I can start teaching him some of these concepts. And I am so pumped that he's finally old enough to do that. I stumbled across Bitsbox a few months ago, and I knew right away I had to get it. Elisha has been learning not just about variables, but about loops and functions and other things that real software engineers like me use. I get so excited not just because I love to code myself, but the skills Elisha is learning, he could actually use to land a real job someday. We're enjoying Bitsbox for our family. If you know a little guy or girl that likes computers, then there's a coupon in the description you can use to get $20 off. And I just wanna say that if you use that coupon, we don't get anything from it. We don't get a kickback. I ju it's just something that we have been using and I wanted to share it with you. In the description, you'll also find links for some of the activities that we did in this video, like the Mad Libs fortune teller. You should also check out some of our other videos. We have a video where we learned all about levers and we got to drive a skid steer. Our next bits box video is gonna be about conditions or if else statements. So be on the lookout for that one. Also, if you have any suggestions for activities or things that we could do in a video, please leave it in the comments below. In a few weeks, we're gonna be going to NASA's Kennedy Space Center to see a SpaceX launch. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even learned something. Thanks for being part of our Crate Happy family. Bye.